Good morning and welcome to See What She Can Do Conversations. I am here with my co-host today, Caroline Wiley. Good morning, everybody. We Our guests today are Lakshmi and her husband, Dr. Niru Jayanthi. They are the founders of Pickup Sports and parents to two young boys. We saw we saw one of their little ones earlier on in the show today. Uh, it was great to great to see them. Um, they're very passionate about helping parents introduce their young kids to sport right in the home in a really fun way. And if you're a um, parent with young kids, this is definitely the program for you to listen to because we can all use more fun in our homes these days. Uh, welcome, Lakshmi and Dr. Nero. Thank you. Thank you. I'm excited to be here. Thanks for having us. Oh, it's great to have great to have you with us this morning. Uh, I'm going to just jump right in and get started. Uh, I'd love to know. You know what role has sport played in the in your lives whether it's within you know the children your two wonderful boys that you have and how you bring it to life um as a family um sure well let me start um I, i'm gonna actually have my husband start because i had decided young that i'm not gonna marry anybody who's ever into sports <laughs> <laughs> and then my mind changed um when i met when i met Nero. so um, i'm gonna have him talk about his sports uh, life and then how um, it's integrated with our family now. Well, and yeah, we have you know, to touch on that aspect in, in after yeah. your husband speaks about why you decided you were not going to marry a sport <laughs> lover. So let's let's have a listen. Yeah. Um, so you know, I actually uh, I grew up uh, in the '80s, and our environment was very different than it is now. And that environment was actually just playing um, playing for fun, playing with friends and kids in the neighborhood running down the street, get on your bike. And most of our sport activity, physical activity, was what we call pick up sports, literally. Um, you just pick up and went and played. And uh, we rarely had uh, organized practices. Um, and it was all self-directed. And it was quite a bit of fun. Now, you know, in some areas, you, you pick an area. Mine was, you know, competitive tennis. But it was, most of that was still self-directed. But even during periods of doing that, I had an opportunity to play and try just about every sport. And I really loved every sport as I went through and, you know, I went the medical route and went through the whole thing, but, you know, um, it just so happened. It turned out to be that my research work on young uh, folks, young athletes um, was, uh, um, you know, about uh, the advantages uh, of playing multiple sports, particularly with injury risk and also retention and continuing to enjoy. And, and, um, I was one of the first people to describe that uh, and you know you don't have to be the best as long as you're the first and and kind of it's a worldwide phenomenon now where today's culture is very different and a lot of kids are asked and forced to um, uh, play a single sport at a very young age and not have not explore not be self-directed and particularly not at home so so a path is now with our two boys is is you know changed a lot over the last 30 years or so or more actually yeah maybe you can comment yeah, yeah. Um, so I guess to touch on what I said earlier, um, the reason I, you know, I actually grew up in a house full of brothers and boys and my, da my dad was really into fitness. My brothers played a lot of sports and I did as well. Um, so it was kind of like too much sports and, and I was the only girl. So I was, you know, trying to pave my own way and do girly things. So I said, I'm never going to marry anyone who's into sports, but I did secretly like it. You know, I, I watched and I played and I was always into fitness. Um, and then, of course, you know, when I met Nero, and of course, that's his livelihood, and, you know, he's so passionate about it, then I, I became more interested as an adult. Um, and now that we have two boys, I just love seeing them we have these successful experiences when they're playing and, you know, increasing their confidence. And, you know, I just want to make a world where everybody feels confident, and sports uh, has a large role to play in that. Well, and what a joy... Yeah. to have a household where your focus is mm -hmm. on play, right? I mean, a yeah. lot less stress on you as a young child if if the focus is on play and building confidence than on being the best, the first, the fastest, the strongest, whatever that might look like, mm -hmm. right? So, so kudos to you guys. And have you seen any, you know, challenges, I guess, Dr. Nero, either for you or for Lakshmi, with, you know, whether it's in your practice or in your own family, with your kids losing interest or not being interested in participating in sports, you know, whether it's, you know, kids that are 
you know, just playing, you know, video games or, you know, dropping out even in their teen years? Like, are you seeing, do you have personal experience on that side? Mm -hmm. Um, Sure. Yeah. I can talk about the kids and then, um, and then Niru could talk a little bit on what he's seen on the patient side. Um, Yeah. With the kids. So, you know, it's interesting. Each child has a very different interest level in sports. Um, Like our older one, for example, he's just, he's a little bit more me. He's very creative into crafts and arts and, you know, he likes being active, but he's not, you know, obsessed with competition and play. Our younger one, on the other hand, he's a little lefty. He loves all sports and he's got this natural talent and he wants to play all the time. So the, you know, when we, you know, as, as far as parenting is, is concerned, you know, you assume we have two boys they are going to be really into sports. And then our older one, you know, we were, we had to kind of push him a little bit, but we don't want to push him too much just because of what we know. Um, so, you know, guiding him in the right way and, in, and, in, in a way to make it fun was incredibly important. Um, Whereas our younger one, it was just kind of easier to just throw him in there and just let him play. So just understanding the nuances and what works for each child um, is really important to make sure that they see sports as not something I have to do, but something I want to do. Um, Because we're not seeing it as something that's gonna get him some sort of college scholarship. We just want to see him play for fun and to be active and to be a, a healthy, you know, 35 year old one day, you know, so that's, that's why we want to make sure mm-hmm. that it's part of his life. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, if you want to talk a little bit about what you've seen with patients. Yeah. And I'll just piggyback uh, what she says is, you know, I don't, I actually don't think uh, we don't really push it all. We really, really do want it to be self-directed and particularly at home and in environments where they develop that confidence. And this is not dissimilar to a lot of households where kids stratify themselves to, what we call in our pickup sports model, like the ballers who are our younger kid who's the very competitive mm-hmm. and will pick up a ball anytime and, and play and compete. And then the you know explorers who want to try a lot of different things. And that's our older child, um, but don't have necessarily long-term aspirations or interests, but that was where most kids are, mm-hmm. you know, and then um, the starters are the kids who maybe need more encouragement on just on the fun side and really safe environments around either family or, or, or friends where it's not really intimidating. And they're probably not the ones who would even consider signing up for organized sport. And so you have to look at every child differently, even your own children. And so that it's always positive. And, uh, you know, uh, I'll say that, you know, our older kid, we hesitated to do any sort of organized sport. He's almost eight now. And here, uh, baseball is very, very competitive. Um, even at, if you can believe it at the six, seven, eight year old level. Um, but he did all of it at home. We always ask, what do you want to try now? And then he said he would like to try to play baseball. We put him in a baseball league and he flourished. Aww. And he, you know, his first game he got, you know, he got four hits and four runs and he was doing somersaults. The only kid who did somersaults oh, every run. And I love, he it. Just loved it. I love it. But he developed the skills and confidence at home. And 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 for so while all the other kids were in baseball for literally six, seven seasons prior to it, he was just at home playing with us and learning ball control and batting and running and just basic skills, catching and everything. So that when he did integrate in that environment, he was ready and he had a po- very positive experience. And that's that's the crux of it, that's our goal. And so what I see is the rush, and, and, and this is just because people don't know about alternatives, that you feel um, as a parent that, you know, you, you know, my gosh, if I don't get my kid going by four or five, I'm gonna be way behind. I've got to get him signed up for this or that. There's, I don't have the confidence as a parent to do anything more. And and so inherently what happens then is um, the child feels a little bit pressured. Uh, there's a performance aspect like you talked about. And then um, and as they get older, we have injury and burnout and, and the attrition uh, from sport is really important. And I know this is a, you know, this is a program also focused on women. And I can tell you that, um, you know, 70% of kids quit sport uh, between the ages of 11 and 13, and the majority of those are girls. Yeah, and mm-hmm, so, for sure. Uh, mm-hmm. They're actually dropping out at three times the rate of their male peers. Like it's yeah, the numbers yeah. much yes, bigger. Absolutely. Yeah. And yeah. so if you don't find ways to intentionally make it a positive experience from the onset and create confidence and everything, particularly with uh, with girls, uh, you'll continue to lose them. So, so that's what, and, and this is a big, you know, this is the fundamental problem with, um, the way the physical activity and sport environment is uh, uh, certainly in America and and other parts of the world too, but where um, it's the haves and have nots. So you have the kids who are uber competitive and, and start very young and and are focused on that and and getting better and winning. 
And then there's a bunch of kids who don't want to do that and then they quit or they don't even want to be a part of that environment. And so, uh, so you get, um, unfortunately, a real big dichotomy of, of sport participation. Do you know what I love about what you said? First of all, I have a baller and an explorer in my family too. Yeah. So I love that because I can totally relate, right? You had the, you had, and it's my dynamic is the same as yours, except I have two girls and my oldest was the one that just wanted to try stuff, all different kinds of things for fun. And my youngest was uber competitive. I wonder if that's like birth order or what yeah. that looks like, yeah. 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 you know, the youngest always wants to be able to do as much as their, their older sibling can do. Um, but right. I love, like, I love the lesson in that for parents, right? For me as a parent, I love and I wish I'd spoken to you in my early days and my younger self mm -hmm. to say, yes. don't worry, they're not going to get left behind. Like, you know, they're having fun at home. They're building confidence. That's setting them up for life. And then when they're ready, they'll go into their things, right? They'll go into the, mm -hmm. because we have so much pressure on us as parents to make sure we're doing good by our kids, but actually doing best by our kids is spending time with them at home, helping them learn to have fun. Yeah. Right. Well, and, and along those, those lines, what I um, enjoyed hearing is, you know, it's not just about the journey of building confidence for your child, but it's really a journey of building confidence for you as a parent. Mm -hmm. And it's that, you know, collective journey together um, that's really, really important. And I, I, I don't think we talk enough about that. Yeah. And so that leads me to my next question around, you know, You've certainly stressed the 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 importance and the the opportunity that parents have to influence, and you've talked about different categories. You know, what are your what are your suggestions to to parents who may have different types of kids? I know certainly I would agree. I have a, my older is the explorer, my younger is the you is have the a baller. baller and explorer too, right? Yeah. So <laughs> perhaps birth order is an issue, but. Um, you know, what, what are your, what would be your, your recommendations, certainly um, within your professional realm, uh, near in terms of, you know, how do you, how do you get started, right? And, and feel yeah, like you're you know, having some uh, success. Yeah, you know, the mindset change is the biggest one. The parents I talked to, and I, and, you know, uh, quite frankly, I, I had researched and spoke across so many, I mean, probably more than 100 times around the world on speaking on this, and I wasn't sure they were reaching, and it was to medical audiences and academies and all these places that a lot of them in large part agreed with me. But it's hard as a parent when you're caught up in the rat race and you're, and you're um, you know, to get perspective. So it's a mindset that take a deep breath and it's going to be okay a little bit like you said. And and so when you see all these other people doing this, your neighbors, your friends that are signing up and you, and you watch the kids actually pass your kid up, it's hard. It's hard to watch that. I, you know, just to be honest, I, I actually have an extensive background in tennis and teach and do all these things. And I have, you know, they have all the exposure they want. I want them to want it long-term. And I have friends who, whose kids and other kids in the neighborhood are taking lessons two or three times a week and clearly ahead of our kids. But uh, I just take a deep breath and I go, I'm going to have a long-term approach to this and, and it's going to come when it comes. And the data is really clear on that. And our experiences should dictate that. Remember, Take us back to a time where, you know, six, seven, eight, those are really young ages. And, you know, some people don't even get in introduced to a sport. They end up becoming a professional athlete at until 10, you know, or 11 or even later. And so, um, you know, we, and not to get too detailed on this, there is, um, we did what's called a systematic review in the British Journal of Sports Medicine, which is the largest sports medicine journal in the in the world. And, and there were 22 studies looking at whether you should, play one sport only at an early age uh, versus playing multiple sports. And out of the 22 studies, there wasn't one study that showed that you would be a better uh, athlete in the end. It means elite level, Olympic level, wow. whatever your outcome was. So it's zero out of 22 studies. Why um, isn't that study more widely published? Like yeah. why are people, more people yeah. talking well, like about I that? Well, like I said, that goes to British Journal of Sports Medicine. So do you have an online subscription to that? Probably not. <laughs> I don't, <laughs> no. no. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> translated to the delay people right yeah, and so yeah. um and we're fighting you know what we're fighting and we're in america and i'm sure it's a little bit like that but america it, you know has a very strong business model right and so the business model is currently catering to overutilization of that group that's uber motivated right and so they yeah. get money from taking a kid having them do it two three four five times a week is easier for a business model than trying to cater to a lot of kids who may only do it 
one time a week. Mm -hmm. And so, so the business model is, is set. That's why you get all these academies and all these, um, you know, facilities that are geared towards the high level Uber motivated kid, the, just the ballers. Um, and so that, that's been one of the things that's been one of the challenging things to combat as well, too. And right. that model leaves out, you know, your explorers or your starters, right? I mean, it leaves out a good portion of the kids who are not going to head that way, which is why, I mean, mm -hmm. we here in, in Canada and, you know, see what she can do really thinks it's important at the local level that we make sure we support, you know, not just the elite level athletes in that, that roadway, that pathway, but also, you know, recreational um, team sports that are focused on, you know, learning and having fun and being part of a community and mm -hmm. all the great reasons why people would want to continue on for the rest of their lives, right? An active lifestyle. So, uh, yeah, we call it, this is going to sound terrible, we call it the youth sports pyramid scheme. And so... Yeah. What, that what does that here. look like? That sounds intriguing. <laughs> I feel like this is a Bravo CSI episode. <laughs> We have to be a little uh, provocative when we say it, but the reality is the goal of this pyramid scheme is to get a bunch of kids enrolled in programs so that you can figure out who the best kids are. And in each, you know, every two years, you get to 6U, 8U, 10U, you find out more and more who the elite kids are, and then you keep catering to that group, and then you get the, you get the better and better kids. The, the, the top the, of the pyramid, yeah. Yeah, you get yeah. to the top of the pyramid. Yeah. And then everyone else is everyone left, else is left yeah. out. Yeah. 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 And so we're focused on the whatever's left over from that pyramid and <laughs> trying to keep that pyramid larger. But the pyramid scheme, and then, like I said, is the business model is to keep adding resources to the to that to whoever's, you know, left, you know, whoever is surviving this pyramid uh, scheme. And, you know, right now it's happening right before our eyes over the last 20, 30 years. And I'm not saying all coaches or businesses or programs are like that by any stretch, but unfortunately, much more of the focus has been on on that uh, elite level rather than the participation. You know, we've, uh, I think we've experienced, well, even as adults coming into mm -hmm. new sports, Caroline and I both play ice hockey together. It's a big sport here in Canada. And we started mm -hmm. as, as um, adults, like in our mm -hmm. 40s. And, you know, the joy of a lot of these local associations here locally is that they are offering pretty robust recreational programs for fun. So we're not at the top of the pyramid, clearly. <laughs> we're also not at the bottom. Like, we're also not at the, you know, the next level through is, is the focus around kids. We're actually a different level because, you know, we kind of, you know, often um, get thrown the extra ice time that the, you know, the kids and and uh, other leagues that have been around for a long time have access to, right? So, so we feel that, but we do have a lot of, you know, we have a lot of local associations who are putting some good time and investment mm -hmm. and resources into the recreational level. And I think what we're hearing from you is that that's important, right? We need to make sure we nurture uh, kids and adults even, you know, um, at the recreational level so that we can have fun and confidence and do it for life. Well, and it's the emphasis yeah. on uh, the long game. Just what you mentioned earlier. At the end of the day, um, if we're only focused on that top part of the iceberg, then we miss everything that's under the water. Right. So I'm going to take a commercial. We're going to take a short commercial break right now, and we will be back in a couple of minutes to continue on this great conversation. As a result of COVID-19, leaders around the world are facing some of the most challenging situations they've ever experienced. In times like these, the ability to be resilient is really paramount. David Patchell Evans is the founder and CEO of Good Life Fitness, and he's learned firsthand in his 41 years running his business about the importance of resilience. He's created a free habit-building 21-day experience to help leaders bounce back. Check out goodlifefitness.com where they have a blog, and this is where you can get your free digital guide. Okay, we are back with Lakshmi and her husband, Dr. Niru Jayanthi. And we're having a really great conversation around the importance of play in home and introducing your kids at a young age to sport in a really fun way. Uh, we talked a little bit about how parents can get involved in the importance of their involvement and their confidence in assuring their kids really just have fun and that they, they have a joy for sport for a lifelong passion, right? 
Absolutely. Um, so we're going to jump in now and talk a little bit about, I mean, you guys have talked around the notion of how important it is to try multiple sports and play multiple sports. Um, we talked a little bit about, you know, high dropout rate. Um, you know, Lakshmi, I'm going to hand this one over to you. You know, what do you say to the parent who says, like, my kid is just not interested? They don't want to. They don't want to pick up a sport. Like, what do you think is at the heart of that? Yeah, I mean, you know, like we said, every every child is different. Every child's interest level is different, and you don't want to force them. Um, so the key is to just make it fun. I mean, just like you know, many kids aren't interested in math or reading. You you find fun ways to uh, to help them get interested in it. So um, you know, what we do is to make just make fun games out of it. Like, don't say you're teaching your child um, baseball and come up with a, you know, good game around baseball, around throwing, around playing and be involved with it. Don't, you know, it's not just you teaching them, it's you playing with them. So especially young kids, you know, ages three to six, uh, parents are your are their world. So anytime you get down and play with them, they're interested. So they may not be interested in a coach who they've never met before and joining a league of kids they've never seen before. But, but they may they may very well be interested in just playing with you and going outside and playing. And one way um, interest forms in any physical activity is when kids have that confidence to play, like we alluded to. So when they've learned these basic, what we call physical literacy skills, like how to throw properly, how to catch, how to balance, um, when they start mastering those skills, they start having uh, the confidence to play and then they want to play more. So a lot of times they feel like they're not successful or they're, you know, they don't know how to play or they're not good at it, yeah. um, that can all be taught, especially at a young age. And so, you know, bringing them in slowly and having fun with them, teaching those, getting them to master those skills is a great way to get them, and uh, in, you know, interested in long-term play. Um, and if it's okay, can I uh, piggyback on uh, even more specific parts with, about that? And here's a nice little promotion of the actual box. <laughs> we thought quite a bit about those parents who don't feel comfortable to teach their kids mm -hmm. how to get introduced to sports, not to become some elite level athlete, but to be introduced to sport, especially at that kind of three to six, three to seven year old age range, which you do for everything else. You do for reading and math and, and so many other skills you learn yeah. in school. For in art and you, I mean, you name it, music, and but we, for some reason, some people are just not comfortable. And even those with sport experiences don't know how to tailor it to a three to seven year old. So like Lakshmi said, you know, within the every box or the four week curriculum that gives, all, you know, what you do week by week based on whether you're an explorer, um, you know, a starter, or even if you're a baller, the type of games, the warm up, all of it with videos. We even have live, live coaching and then fun items in there. Um, I think we have a box right here that has you know, some of the stuff this is a soccer box. Or, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. So so each of those has all these things. You get a little book you read with your kid. Um, here's your curriculum on, on here with all the different types of cards about what to play. You know, kids love stickers, you know, and then aside from the right, you don't have the right age uh, appropriate ball and equipment. You know, we don't, as a parent, it's hard to know what's appropriate for that size, you know, in age of the kid and, and level. You know, a little fun is a little, uh, um, Soccer, scarf soccer, and yeah. you know and so there's a bunch of stuff in there to help them navigate through that process so it is kind of spoon-fed and and uh uh hopefully it makes you know what we're trying to do is get the parents comfortable um to help instruct their kids it, again in a safe setting at home um and you know uh, i hope most people realize when you do sign up your kid at four five six years old for a league you have a volunteer coach like me volunteering uh as another parent to teach your kid mm -hmm. and so it struck us pretty quickly that uh you're paying 150 to 200 dollars for a season uh with another mom or dad coaching your kid when you could buy a 45 five dollar box and, <laughs> and then and do, do it, it at home do it for yourself. as long as you want with a curriculum yeah. with a, do you know what, we you get know no what, curriculum. what strikes me is uh last two summers ago i mean i'm my kids play all kinds of sports, and I remember the year that the the league came forward and said we're going to have to shut this recreational league down if we don't have more coaching staff. Mm -hmm. And you know, I've watched a gazillion soccer games from the sidelines, and and I'm a pretty confident person. I didn't have the confidence to go out there and be a coach, and then I decided I would do it. I remember actually talking to Caroline's mm -hmm. 
husband who happened to coach my my daughter, you know, for a number of years, and I'm like, well, what am I even supposed to do? Like, it strikes me that like your next iteration of this pro this project or this you know pickup sports should be a box for volunteer coaches because you know the yeah. league was going to shut down. I mean, the realities are some parents work mm -hmm. and they can't be at every game, and you know, so we really applaud the volunteer coaches that are out there. Um, but you know, Absolutely. it. it uh, what strikes me is that I would love to have had a box, like your box, <laughs> maybe not for three yeah. to six year olds, because my daughter was 15 at the time. And she was like, No, I don't want you to coach. But you know, it was a great experience. Um, because watching the game is not necessarily the same as coaching it. And, you know, to have those like a, a box with the curriculum and the tools and everything you need in one place, what a brilliant idea for yes. coaches. That's oh, your next yeah. product. Yeah. idea. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It, and, you yeah, know, it, it strikes me that, it, again, just to reiterate, and I really think it's so important, you know, so much of who we are as parents, we feel is tied to the success of our children. And so, you know, what, what um, <coughs> is inspiring to what you're doing is you're actually building, again, building more than as much as it's focused on the child's confidence you know, there is a double journey here mm. from a confidence perspective. And, um, you know, having done this for the last couple of years, do you find that, y you know, the feedback that's coming back from certainly, you know, from not only the children, um, and maybe you can talk to that, but also from the parents? Can you uh, speak yeah. to that as well? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's, it's actually really fun to watch. You know, we've had um, for example, there's a dad who had bought the tennis box for his son, but his older daughter got really into it. And his daughter got so into playing tennis, you know, through the lessons in our box and our virtual coaching that she actually asked her dad, like, let's go to the tennis court and let's play. And it was, it totally took him by surprise because he himself wasn't a tennis player and he just kind of taught the basic skills and didn't even intend it for her, but for her, you know, their son. And, you know, those are just, that's kind of anecdotal, but it's been fun to watch um, you know, just kids being introduced to all these sports that their parents had no idea how to play. Well, and it um, sounds like the kids are introducing the parents. I mean, I had the same thing happen yeah. with me for hockey. Exactly. I started playing yes. because my girls were playing and I had never played before. So that's that's probably an unintended consequence, eh? Like that yeah. that you're actually encouraging adults to, you know, get more active too yeah. because their kids are learning and they're, you know, encouraging their parents. Right. It, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. We've seen it, um, you know, already uh, quite a bit, you know, there's, oh, what are you going to say? Yeah, yeah. no, I, I mean, actually, I wouldn't even say it was unintended. In our first iteration, we were debating whether it would be a parent child box to get the parents to be physically active. This ah, is before the pandemic. Okay. And have, have a curriculum for them. And then yeah. we decided that, you know, if you're trying to shoot too many directions, you might get lost with your messaging. So we did focus on the kid, but if you look uh, carefully, uh, all the um, all the games involved, uh, and we don't even say parent and grown up because this, you know, some people don't have, you know, parents or or it's a, a single parent or yeah. it's a grandparent or yeah. uncle, but it's a grown up uh, who will do the warm up with you. All the games are with a grown up, so there's actually uh, the entire program is based on on a uh, comfort level of play with with another grown up because we want it's family oriented. We want the parents to play and and grownups and, and be involved in their child's experience. And for anyone who hesitates and worries that they don't know, I'm pre we're, we're pretty confident. We're, we're going to probably have to do a research study to confirm that every uh, grown-up uh, is better than their four-year-old at anything. <laughs> <laughs> Not for long. No. <laughs> I learned that in hockey quite quickly. My kids quickly yeah. surpassed me. They're still better than a four- or five-year-old. Yeah. So better than a four- or five-year-old. <laughs> yeah. And again... <laughs> And, and, you know, just to, just to kind of um, emphasize just what that experience happens, you know, the, the opportunity to experience fun with your child or children, um, you know, we don't allow ourselves enough time to do that. Yeah. And so that's the wonderful thing. You can be spontaneous, you can be, um, but yet um, uh, conscious of what you're doing, even though, you know, it's, it's it's like every time you open the box, it's a whole new experience for you, right? Of fun. Yeah. So what kind of boxes do you guys have? Do you want to talk a little bit about that? Sure. Yeah, we have six different sports right now, plus, um, you know, our adaptive boxes. So the sports are um, soccer, tennis, volleyball, basketball, baseball. Um, what did I miss? 
Uh, uh, sorry, football. Football. Uh, football. Flag football. football. Sorry. Yep. <laughs> There's always one I'm missing. Um, flag football, and then um, so each box comes with the curriculum, age-appropriate equipment, and then the fun stuff. I think that's really important for this young age. You know, like we have the scarf for soccer. We've got you know little tattoos, under eye tattoos. We've got baseball cards. Um, you know, things that get kids interested in the sport, you know, from the outside and so that they, you know, start learning a little bit more about it. There's activity books that teach kids just the basics that they need to know, you know, like, um, you know, how to score a goal or, you know, what a touchdown means, things like that. And then there's, you know, coloring and matching games. Um, here they're actually showing some stuff. Each one comes with like a little drawstring bag so you can carry all your equipment. Um, and then there's, um, and, and the equipment is really thought out. It's not only age appropriate, but it's the quality equipment. So a lot of times people don't know that their kid isn't playing the sport properly because they have the wrong equipment. They're mm. using too large of a racket, tennis racket. They're using too big of a soccer ball or too big of a basketball. And then the kid can't actually handle it properly. And that's why they're not successful. So having that right size equipment is important. Um, but there's an educational piece of it. Like parents just don't know. They just give them whatever ball they have and they think that that's fine, but you know, that doesn't work for the kid. And they just think that their kid isn't good at it, but that's right. not hmm. the case. So, you know, we're having to educate on that a little bit. Um, uh, and then we have the adaptive box that we collaborated with Flex for Access on um, and creating a curriculum for kids uh, with physical, um, different physical abilities, particularly cerebral palsy. And that's more of a um, basic motor control and ball control um, box to help them with strengthening and um, flexibility and also learning those skills, basic sports skills so that kids with adaptive needs can participate in sports with all the other kids because we don't want necessarily to have them have a different program. We want to make sure that they're included and they can play with all kids. Well, we had Jess Silver on our program um, early yeah. on uh, on our podcast, and she's also uh, writing on our our uh, website. So she's a blog, a guest blogger for us, much like you are. There's an article about yeah. pickup sports on seewhatshecando.com so our listeners can... Uh, check in to see what she can do to kind of learn a little bit more about pickup sports, but where else can they go Lakshmi and uh, Nero to learn more about this? Sure. Yeah. Our website is www.pickupsports.co. So just CO, no FM at the end. Um, we've got, you know, all the sports listed there. There's also a three month program. We're also available on Amazon as a subscription. So the subscription program is only through Amazon, but um, you just get a new sport every month. Um, for six months, and uh, it's a great way for kids to uh, try a different sport every month. What a perfect I, you know, believe- COVID box, honestly. It's, Don't we yeah, need more right. fun in our homes? Perfect. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. It's perfect. It gets them active right at home. You know, in our virtual and on-demand classes, help you teach those and just play those games. And they're all quick. You know, these are five to seven-minute games. Kids, especially young kids, don't have the attention span for sure, much more than that. So okay, so you guys... To- you guys are in Atlanta. I forgot to mention that early on. And you had American Thanksgiving yesterday. Did you pull yes. out the football box yesterday and play some football? We, we did play football earlier in the week. But yesterday it was more, you know, it was supposed to rain most of the day. So we, we ended up going to the playground and um, playing. And I think we played some baseball maybe a little bit outside. But we did flag football earlier in the week. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, any yeah. thoughts for uh, new sports, new boxes? Have you uh, gotten yeah. feedback from other folks in terms of what you'd... Uh... Oh, my gosh. Every, you know, if anytime I mention it, they're like, oh, you guys should do lacrosse or cricket. You know, we're, we're Indian by background, so we get a lot of people say, do cricket. Um, golf has come Ice up. hockey, that's our vote. The Canadian <laughs> yeah. version, ice hockey. Ice hockey would be fun. Um, be, yeah, we'd have to figure out how to get creative with that. Um, sorry. Oh. Sorry, my uh, our son's walked in right now. Well, hello. Um, it's all good. <laughs> yeah. This is the- um, so yeah. There's a lot of ideas out there as far as other um, other sports, other sport boxes to do. Amazing. Excellent. So, yeah, we're, we're super we're open to feedback. <laughs> What's that? I said we're open to your feedback. Okay. Well, oh. we've got ice hockey as our vote. We'll see if anything else comes okay. comes to mind. We're super grateful that you guys joined us today, and uh, we know that your boxes can be shipped to Canada. So if you're interested, uh, we'll make sure that we put your link in our episode notes so people can check you out. And uh, one last question, and we've got a minute max each. Um, what are you doing as individuals to keep yourselves moving? 
uh, through COVID? Oh, that's a great question. Well, Nir can talk about his tennis and I'll go into what I'm doing. <laughs> well, I mean, I play competitive tennis, so I'm literally looking, I mean, I have a team and run and, and tennis is a great sport. It's actually one of the healthiest sports to play throughout your life and increases, you know, your likelihood of living by about 10 years. But I play with the kids, I'm perfectly yeah. honest. Like I'll ask them and say, let's go, which one are we going to play today? And I let them choose. Are we going to do football? Are we going to do baseball? Are we going to do tennis? And they, they kind of just let me choose. Uh, what we're going to play so i get i get it with them and oh, we yeah. do that every day i mean awesome. i think we do have a little bit of um we're, we're fortunate we live in atlanta georgia so the weather has been you know to our advantage it's still warm here it was about 70 degrees yesterday um so we got that going for us but yeah we do just you know even if we're not doing a sport what going on hikes and you know getting with the kids to just run around and you know and and, I, and i've been doing that a lot and just working at at home and try to safely go to the gym or just run around in our in our yard and just play with them as much as possible. Well, that's a lovely Fantastic. way to close us off. Thank you for sharing. And we're yes. super excited to see some of your boxes in uh, Canadian homes. And uh, we'll make sure yes. we direct people out to your, your website and uh, all your other resources from the episode link. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Right. Thank you guys Thank so much. You. Have a great Bye-bye. day. Yeah, take care. Thanks.